to the book of St. Luke, 18th chapter. See, people don't like my kind of talk, but I just thanks the Lord. St. Luke, 18th chapter, the first through on the fifth verses. When you get it, rest to your darling feet. And it reads, everybody got it? St. Luke, the 18th chapter, the first part, the fifth verses. And he, talking about Jesus, spake a parable unto them uh -huh. to this end, that men also women are always to pray and not faint. There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. This judge didn't have any respect for God. And he did not think anything about his character, but we understand today that character does count. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. Ha! Huh? Don't tell your neighbor, just wait a while. But after what he said within himself, he had a mental talk with himself, you know. Though I fear not God, nor regard man. Let's read that fifth verse in a concert together. Yet, because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Tell your name, I'm going to wear that demon out. I'm As you take your seats, open your mouth, let's repeat what the Lord has given unto me. Push! Push! Pray until something happens. Yes. All right, take your seat, tell somebody as you go into your seat. Push! Push! Amen. Pray until Push. something happens. I came today to talk to you from the message that God has placed on my heart for the month. I believe we started maybe the latter part of August over into September. And that was push, pray until something happens. And that means that we have to pray for something more than one time before God will answer our prayer. Amen. That's letting us know that we must pray until something happens. We pray until God gives us an answer. Amen. The answer might be yes. Come on. Answer might be no. Right. Or the answer might be not now. Right. In other words, what I'm trying to emphasize is we're not going to stop praying. Amen. As I said earlier, David declared out that he was a man of prayer. Right. And when I read what David said, I took those words unto myself. And I said, Lord, I am a woman of prayer. Do I have anybody in here who can attest that you are a man and woman of prayer? Amen. Amen. Y'all talking slow, y'all. Y'all younger than me, don't talk slow. Come on, preacher. Yes, yes, yes. See, I came from an era, some of you all may have been in that era with me, that it was taught that we are only to pray for something one time. Uh -huh. Pray about a situation one time and just tell God thank you and keep on going. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, but I remember being taught, and I'm talking about my husband, so don't nobody go the wrong way, but I was taught, don't pray about it anymore. Y'all ever heard that before? Uh -huh. yeah. The Sunday when we had our anniversary service, the woman of God, bless her heart, I heard when she said, pray about something one time and tell God thank you. I just dropped my head because that didn't resonate in my spirit. Right. Amen. Now, when we learn better, we do better. Yeah. And I don't fault her because that's what she been taught, that's what she believed. But I put a disclaimer out here today, Wilson, don't you look at me funny for what I believe. That's right. Amen. Everybody got a belief now. Right. Everybody got an opinion now. Right. But I found out in my later life, evangelist hard as I'm the only opinion that matters is what God said. You right. That's right. See, I, I grew up people of God. Yes, Lord. And I don't base my Christian life, my Christian living, on what somebody 
everybody else saved. Why? Because we all are men and we all are subject to not to know the right thing. Yes, yes. Y'all talking. So, see, you can help some people. Come on. Yes. But I gain wisdom. That's right. Uh-huh. And I have discovered that nothing is an absolute. Nothing. Uh -huh. Nothing is an absolute truth. <laughs> Meaning that there are cases when you have to pray about something more than one time. Yeah. That you couldn't pray for something but one time. Give me some volume on this one. Pray for something but one time. All of us would be in trouble. But nothing is an absolute. Tell your neighbor, nothing is an absolute. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's how I came up into the era where they say pray about something one time. And if you pray about it more than one time, you don't have faith. Anybody ever heard that before? Can you pray about something more than one time? You don't have faith? Well, I beg all them teachers' pardon because it takes faith to pray over and over continually and persistently about something. It takes faith to call on the name of God day after day, week after week, month after month for the same thing. My God. I found out, Catherine, that when I pray like this, Shonda, it develops my prayer life. It develops my faith in God, knowing that God is going to do something. When we pray one time, let me help you all out. And God answers you right off the bat. Sometimes that don't develop your prayer life. That doesn't develop your faith. Because we'll start treating God like a genie in a bottle. I don't hear nobody. Yeah. We are rubbing and say, come on, Lord. You answered me yesterday, do it now. But when I pray about something consistently and persistently and consistently, I get faith knowing yes. that somehow, some way, somewhere, God is going to answer my prayer. Yes. I come to tell you today, people of God, we're going to push in here. Yes. Tell your neighbor, I pray you can push. Now, it's always good to give a backdrop. Yeah. I believe in the Sunday school lesson, they go to answer where, why, who, and all that That's good right. stuff. Right. If you can't answer them questions, you're not doing a good job. Come on, now. I'm on up in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So how did I get here? Well, I had been praying about a certain situation for quite some time. And every night I would go to bed, and after I prayed, I still would lay in the bed, and I would pray. And I have been calling out an individual's name. And I have been commanding the powers of darkness to take his hands off this individual. Yes. Been doing this now for quite some time. Well, one night. Tell me I say one night. One night. As I was praying, I heard a demonic spirit say. Oh. He spoke to me, he was, and he said, you know, you are supposed to pray about something more than one time. Oh, and the demons ever talk to y'all in the midnight hour. Yeah. Y'all looking funny. Yeah. Amen. But I tell you, I, the devil will talk to you when everybody else is asleep. He came, he said, you know, you're not supposed to pray about something more than one time because but that you keep on praying, you don't have any faith. Oh, God. Now, I want y'all to understand what I'm getting ready to say. During the time I had been praying this prayer, that thought never entered my mind of what I had been taught. And I feel God right now. The devil realized I'm getting close to my breakthrough. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, Tim. Oh, Kiki. Oh, my God. It never entered my mind. So I would pray. I would decree and I would thank God for answering my prayer. Well, after hearing that, I say, well, I know I've heard it, but I thank God I know how to search the script. That's right, that's right. And I said, I'm going into the word of the Lord. I'm going to get my Bible. I got concordance. Yes. I looked it up and I could not find anything concrete where God said or Jesus said, pray about it and let it go. Oh, they looking funny, Eunice. They looking funny. Oh, my God. I had no scripture evidence, Mother Geneva, yeah. 
to back me up on this. And that's why I told you all, nothing is an absolute. Nothing, nothing. Come on. Nothing is an absolute. That means there's no room for error. That means you can do it away. Nothing that's is an absolute. Right. Oh, my God. Oh. So this led me to my Facebook teachings. Push. Pray until something happens. Yeah. And God is so good. As I was teaching on the subject, God gave me an epiphany moment. The eyes of my understanding became enlightened. Right. And that's the era where God has taken this body of Christ, this remnant who are alive before the second coming of Christ. He wants us to have epiphany moments. He wants the eyes my understanding to be open. So I was surprised as to what I said. I said, now listen, I told the church, I'm gonna love my people, not in my notes now. I told them the devil had used what I had been erroneously taught to bring an indictment against me. I know it's heavy. The devil used what I had been taught erroneously and I believed it to bring an indictment against me. When those words came out of my mouth, I was shocked myself. I told Faith, write it right now so I can remember what came out of my mouth. What is an indictment? It's a charge. That's right. A legal term. An accusation. That's right. The devil was accusing me of doing something yeah. that I had been taught not to do. That's right. He said, you only supposed to pray about it one time and let it go. So he knew somewhere that was ingrained down inside of me, yeah. even though I was not thinking about it. But don't you know he got a record too? He knows what you have been taught. That's he right. knows what you have believed. Right. And when he see you walking in a way that's not lining up with the erroneous teaching, he will bring an indictment against you. Yes, he will. Yes. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. But honey, God was so good that night on the live Geneva Payne. The next thing I said was, I'll meet the devil in the Supreme Court of Heaven. I'll take my case to the Supreme Court of Heaven where God is my judge, Jesus is my mediator, and the angels are my jury. I'll meet you. Tell that devil I'll meet you at the Supreme Court of Heaven. And when I wrote that, even getting this message together, I felt led to ask all of you, what indictment is the devil using against you? Yes, Father. Y'all better search your teaching. You better search what you've been believing because the devil will use that as an indictment against you. He'll go tell God, God, you don't believe a praying but one time. And, and if you don't get an answer, that you don't have faith. God, we got to do something about this. I have to teach it in the chair. Yes. He will say whatever it is that you believe, he will go to God on you. Yes, yes. Don't you know Satan is not only here walking the face of the earth, but he's going to and fro up into heaven. We don't understand how this stuff works, but he still got access. Yes. That's right. I say, God, thank you. God, I thank you. You need to search your belief system. You need to see what Satan is using against you. And I thank God, God set me free. Tell your neighbor, God will set you free. So I don't claim that I'm free in everything. Every now and then, a man is hard as God will breathe on me while I'm teaching Mama J. And he'll set me free. If you're not free, you can't help anybody else. You bound up, you trapped up, and you trying to help people. They're going to be the same way you are. But when the Lord sets you free, you can help somebody else get free. Somebody getting free in here today. So we're going to push, tell your neighbor, we're going to push.
gonna push. Oh, we're gonna push. Oh God. See when you're praying for something more than one time and you haven't got an answer, Satan wants you to feel discouraged. Oh, he wants you to feel discouraged. How many of y'all praying about something and you ain't got the answer yet? Amen. Be honest. Come on, be honest. God can't help you if you don't be honest. It ain't no sin to say I pray for something more than one time and I haven't got the answer. I'm still calling on God every night. I'm still believing God every night. I'm still telling God, thank you. Oh, God, shout out. Apostle, I didn't say the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. 
yourself. But how many of you all believe here today that God is going to answer your prayer? Oh, God, I feel the rule of Mama J. God's going to answer my prayer. I may have to sweat, but he's going to answer my prayer. Miss Cara might run, but he's going to answer my prayer. You might have one of them false nails. They may have to break, but God. Stop your foot on the devil and God's going to answer my prayer. Psalm 55 and 17. Psalm writer said, Evening, morning, at noon, will I pray? Oh, I'm going to pray, children. Oh, I walk around and I be praying. I don't have to get on my knees to pray. Amen. Sometimes I just be walking and working and I be calling on the name of the Lord. He said, I will pray and cry aloud. Cry The word didn't say, might hear our voice, or maybe hear our voice, but it said he shall hear my voice. Open your mouth and release your name in this atmosphere right now. Come on up in the house, release your name. Release your name in the atmosphere. And while you're releasing your name in the atmosphere, the intercessors are picking you up right now. My shadow hot tray, okay, tray. Intercessors are picking you up right now. People are praying for you, and you don't even know they're praying for you. Somebody calling your name out, and you don't know who's calling your name out. But somebody thank God for the intercessors that's picking up my name. Thank you, Father, for the intercessors. Oh, God, let y'all go home. Yes, Lord. First Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, Pray without ceasing. That may never stop praying. While I'm up in the floor, I'm praying that prayer. While I'm sweeping, I'm praying that prayer. While I'm washing clothes and folding clothes, I'm praying that prayer. The Bible says, Be in us always pray. Oh my God, let's go back to the text, Lord. God, I feel the ruah. And I text Jesus. Y'all know Jesus. Yeah. I want to see that y'all know Jesus. Because right. I'm telling you, we're in a time in our life now. Well, Jackson Red, you better know who the Son of God is. But I tell you, some say he's a prophet. Some say he's Jeremiah. Some say he is a liar. But what do you say? I say he is the Son of the Living God. Of the Living God. Oh, oh my God. Y'all shedding in now. Jesus spoke a parable that is sitting around an unjust judge and a poor widow woman. He used this parable to illustrate the importance of being persistent in their prayers and never giving up. Say hello, stop your foot and say, I'll never give up. Oh, I'm never going to give up. Sometimes the road gets rough, the going gets tough. Sometimes the beatings get hard, but I'll never give up. Never give up. Oh, my shot now. And persistent means continuing uh -huh. to do something even though it is difficult. That's right. Or other people want you to stop. Uh -huh. Be careful when these naysayers of the gospel wants you to stop doing something. I heard that in the Holy Ghost, Jackson. I heard that in the Holy Ghost. You all better be careful when these naysayers of the gospel want you to stop doing something. Y'all looking at me funny, honey. Took me years to get here, Geneva. But I'm telling you, come saying things that don't line up with the word of God. I told you I got to give them goodbye. Go ahead, that's right. You're not going to stop me from doing something that I know is working. That's right. You're not going to hinder me from doing what I know I'm doing. And I got that proof in there put. That's right. Bye-bye. I got the gift. Tell your neighbor I got the gift of goodbye. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do something.
something even though it's difficult. Other people want you to stop. This means not giving up right. in the face of adversity. Right, Lord, let's look at this little woman. She was poor. Didn't have any money. She couldn't pay a lawyer. Uh, so she went to the judge herself. I thank God we may not can pay a lawyer. But we got a mediator. And his name is Jesus. And he stands up there pleading our case. And the moment I hear God say, the Jesus is pleading our case on today. Oh God, I thank you. So she went to the judge for herself. That took faith to even do that. That's right. She had to fend for herself in a male dominant society. See, a long time ago, women were considered as second class citizens, and the women didn't have any legal rights. And if we're not careful, that's where they want to take us back to, where we, our race, won't have any legal rights, and we won't have nothing. But I agree with the candidate. We're not going back. But I tell you, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back now. And I told you all, I'm not going back. They had to buy by the rules of the man. This woman had been taken advantage of, and she was abused by some adversary. Oh, uh, look at the judge. The judge was unjust. He had no fear of God. And he could care less about what anybody thought about him. The judge was out for himself. Commentaries say people came to the judge. They paid him money. And the judge took the money and put it in his pocket. I believe we got some people like that today. You can go to them. They don't care about you. They just want to get all your money and put it in their pocket. But tell somebody the book stops here today. You're not getting another dime, you're not getting another penny, and you're not going to get another dollar. Jesus stressed that we are to persevere in prayer and not give up. Verse 1, he spake a parable unto them to this evening that men are always to pray and not to faint. That means we are not supposed to lose heart and whatever we are doing. Galatians 6 and 9 and say, let us not be weary, tired, uh-huh, in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Tell your neighbor, I deliver into my due season. When God is going to answer my prayer. If you believe God's going to answer your prayer, clap your hands, shabak it, hit the drum, shake them ballers, shake me a tambourine, do that. Uh, all means it is of necessity. All times we are commanded to pray. The CEV Century English Version, Jesus told his disciples a story about they should keep on praying and never give up. He didn't tell them pray boys one time and stop it, but he told them never give up. Never, never, never give up. Tell somebody never, 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 never give up. up. Never, never, never give up. When we pray, we're not going to give up. Oh, Lord. See, I found in my prayer walk, it's easier to pray about something one time than it is to keep praying about something one time, two times, three times. When I pray about something one time, tell you the truth, I forget all about it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I pray about something more than one time, it stays on my mind. It makes me have to talk to the Lord. I tell God. Maybe you just 
just about to get your breakthrough. God, I We pray. We pray. We pray. We pray. We pray. And it takes strength to pray about something over and over. It takes faith to pray about something over and over. It takes tenacity to pray about something over and over. Because when I pray about something over and over, you know what I'm doing? I'm bombarding heaven. Oh, I'm bombarding heaven. And I believe God said, that's her. She's praying. It don't look like I'm an answer. But I see the faith of my daughter. I see the strength of my daughter. I see the tenacity of my daughter. That woman is bombarding heaven. Anybody going to bombard heaven in here today? Open your mouth and bombard your God. How about shit? Get out of the room. We're going to bombard. God, my God. Oh, but when I persistently pray about the same thing, honey, God say, when you pray consistently about something, he say you're being focused. Yes, yes. That's right. Yes. My, my, shit, shot. my mind not running all over the country. My mind is not running all over the world. When I pray persistently, I am being focused. Y'all hear me out here? I got clarity, Shonda, when I pray about the same thing. If I'm praying about my stomach and my stomach is hurt, I'm not going to trip on my feet. Well, you're not focused. You're confused. If it's your stomach bothering you, you come to talking to God about your stomach, your stomach. And you keep talking to him. After a while, your stomach going to be here. But I'm praying for my stomach. Now I'm talking to God about my feet. Now I'm talking to God about my arm. God said, what do you want me to do? Yes, yes, yes. 
demons are tripping right now. The demons are getting upset in hell because they know we're about to break through here, people. Amen. He know you're about to get that breakthrough. He know the eyes of your understanding have been in life. Don't y'all fool yourself. When we start getting closer to the altar, the devil starts trembling. That's right. That's oh, my God. Right. This little woman uh -huh. kept going to the unjust judge with the same request. And that was to avenge her of her adversary. Now, most of us got an adversary, and we need to keep going to God in prayer until something is done. Tell your neighbor that adversary getting off my back today. Y'all talking so he ain't getting off your back. I can tell you right now. That adversary is getting off of my back. We don't know how many times this woman went to the unjust judge, but every time she went, she said the same thing. <laughs> Avenge me of my adversary. She might have had a little song. I don't know. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. She didn't say, Avenge me of my adversary on Monday and go back on Tuesday and Wednesday and say something else. Oh, she wasn't asking for help for a light bill, for her water bill, or for her food. But she wanted this unjust judge to avenge her of her adversary. Oh, I feel the Ruach Hokadosh. She came to the judge day after day. He didn't do anything to help her. His heart was hard. And he really, he didn't have any intention on doing anything to help her. But this woman would not give up. She would not let the judge rest. She said, avenge me of my adversary. An adversary is anyone or anything standing in the way of the completion of God's will or opposing God's people, even collectively or individually. Well, if you're standing in my way, oh, Lord, if you're standing in my way, yes. if you're posing me to do what God wants me to do, I'm going to bulldoze you down. Come on, preacher. Y'all right. looking funny. Y'all right. tell everybody else off. We time up telling the devil off. Right. I'm going to bulldoze you down. You trying to stand in my way, trying to keep me from doing what God wants me to do. You're nothing but my opponent, and you all better go to spiritual warfare on YouTube. Right. That's right. It's going down. Oh, say it, Jack. Say it, Lucy. It's going down. Oh, my shine out of the bullshit. Finally. Somebody say, finally. Finally. We about to go home now. Yeah. Finally. Finally. That's what Paul said. Finally, my brethren. Finally. I hear you, Paul. The last thing you do, uh -huh, be strong in the Lord. So finally, the judge gave in and granted what she wanted and that was to be a bitch of her adversary yes. oh she kept asking the judge avenge me of my adversary oh that judge he got tired yes. oh my god oh the devil is getting tired now of us talking to God about the same thing 
long love. She was getting on his reserve nerves. The nerves he had set aside. Lord have mercy. The unjust judge was at the point where his silence didn't stop her from coming. She would go to that old judge and he wouldn't say nothing. But I believe that woman said, I am going to be persistent and I am going to be consistent. You don't have to say nothing. You can go in there and lock yourself up in your chamber. But tomorrow, about this time, I'm coming back. I don't hear nobody. You don't have to answer. But I want you to know that tomorrow will come. And when I come back, Judge, I got the same
became a sanctuary. Yes, God. Yes, God. And I pray yes, about me. Yes. What are you going to do with Lord? Yes, Lord? When are you going to heal my body? Yes, when are you going to deliver me? Yes, Everybody else can deliver, but it's me like my deliver on a snow train. Y'all ever been there? Yes, Lord. Talk to me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Everybody, everybody, everybody getting delivered. Slow train. My God. And you said, Lord, yes. what you gonna do? Oh. When, Lord? You gonna get me up from here? Yes, Lord. What you gonna do? Thank you, Jesus. But I thank God. I thank God. Yes. Pray. Yes. Cause something happened. Um. Laid on the floor, I'm winding myself down as I do. Laid on the floor, praying, Elder. Yes, God. Talking to the Lord, asking yes. God. Yes, God. Heal me, heal me, heal me. Yes. I was calling one day, wanting to know what I was doing. I said, I'm here on the floor, laying on the floor in the corner. So I ain't ashamed to talk about me. That's right. Because right. everything I've been through with yeah. has made me the vessel. Yes, Lord. Yes. That God can heal me. That's right. That's right. And that God can get the glory out of it. That's right. Because God don't have no shame. Amen. And what, I, what I've been through. I laid on that floor. The Lord's called me that morning. Want to know what I was doing? I said, Lawrence, I'm in the corner on the floor. She said, Francis, get up. Say, you right now, you just waiting to die. Well, that's what I probably was. Ha ha! Whoa! Ha ha! Yeah! My sister Lawrence said she remember. Yeah. I probably was waiting to die. Amen. Because where I was wasn't too good. Yes. Ha ha! I'm not winding down, girlfriend. But have you ever been somewhere in your life and it wasn't so good? Real talk. Yes, yes, right. yes. And I laid there. And I kept on, but I didn't give up. I got up. She told me to get up. I was up there, and I got up. Hallelujah. Oh, I got to go, Jackson. Hold my hand. Um, but the greatest getting up is what you see now. Connected to us by visiting my website www.francisdartisan.org. 